But we just need to get it right. That's why there's only one hero of the Christian faith, and that's the one who rescued both of us. That's why God gets the glory. That's why we write songs about Jesus and not about us. Now, I mentioned that the word justified has two meanings. The first pertains to acquittal. That is, to declaring and treating a person as righteous. Here, here's the gospel. A sinner, a hellion, a good person, but a sinner. Here's the gospel. They hear the gospel and they respond as the Holy Spirit makes that message come alive in their heart. They come and they give their life to Jesus Christ and they are acquitted. They were guilty of all these crimes, but just as they came to Christ, Psalm 103, God took their sins. As far as the east is from the west, buried them in the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember them again. And as the African-American preacher so eloquently said and placed an angel there with a sign that said, no fishing. He acquitted me. It means you came in and you had nothing but sin. And as I said a few weeks ago, you took your sin and gave it to one who didn't have any. Namely, Jesus, the sinless Son of God. And the sinless Son of God took his righteousness because he knew you were spiritually bankrupt, didn't have any, and gave you his righteousness. You're acquitted. Go free. The prison doors have opened. I'll tell you, the gospel still fires my soul. Just fires my soul. Now, to make sure you're understanding and tracking with me, let me, let me give references to my acquittal and how my acquittal came so you can understand from God's perspective a person being justified. Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You didn't earn it, you didn't buy it, freely. Romans 3.28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified, acquitted by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Romans 5.1, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.9, much more than having now been justified by his blood, the cross, we can be saved from wrath through him. But then Paul was dealing with a legalistic mindset at the church at Galatia. And so listen to what he said to, in the book of Galatians 2 and verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. A person comes to Jesus Christ one way and one way alone. But that still causes me to say, we've got to take time to translate verse 21. We must have a clear understanding on verse 25. He said they were justified by works. He turns right around and said they were justified by faith, which is true. Where is the, the tension that God wants us to take home from this worship service? The first is acquittal. I have been acquitted. Well, let me ask you a question. It's been asked all the time. Preacher, um, once you're acquitted, you're now on your way to heaven, right? Right. Sins are forgiven, right? Right. Past, present, and future. Right? Right. Someone says, wait a minute. Uh, how can you trust Jesus this morning you've already forgiven of sins that you haven't even committed yet? When he died on the cross for our sins, all of your sins were present or future. Out there. And he was dying for that. Oh, one other question then. Since all that's already transpired, I can live any way I want to, Right? wrong. You now have this new nature that came inside of you, innate within you. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. God's come in and you know what he's done? He's placed his nature in you and as you yield to him, he fleshes himself out through you in the way of the fruit of the spirit. There's that word again. Fruit and works is interchangeable. And he's just changed my want to's. Anybody give a witness in this place? I mean, you've, you've been acquitted and he changed your desires. I started drinking at a different fountain. I, I, I've not touched the liquor and the alcohol that caused much grief in my dad's life and in my life and our family's life. And it's not because I'm just on this big kick and says you can't drink. No, I'm saved and don't want to. He changed my want to's. He really, really did. 
I didn't like to go to church, and now I couldn't wait till this morning when it got time to get here. How, what in the world happened? I, I've been acquitted. Why, why did you write a generous check this morning when you didn't get paid this week? I've been acquitted. He, he's done so much for me. I, I just, if I can, by the, by the grace of God, I, I know I can't pay him back, but I, I sure want to live for him. I, I would like to live to the end that God would be glorified. What could Jesus do with this old sinner that got acquitted? I, I don't have to come to church tonight for the Lord's Supper. I get to. I'm telling you, if, if you're coming to church out of duty, I question if you've ever been acquitted. Son, this isn't something that you, it's hard to do. You got to make yourself get up and do it. No, you can't. When I, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm feeling what I'm preaching. I've been acquitted. I was guilty. And if I'm telling you, if I stood before God at the great white throne judgment, and he said, Johnny, you never allowed me to acquit your sin, I'd have been sentenced to the lake of fire where the worm dieth not. And the Bible says that I'd be consciously alive for all eternity, separated from the God that loves me. But yet he sent Jesus to take my place. Somebody preached the gospel to me. He gave me his love letter in the form of a Bible that I had the privilege to preach. And before I preached it, I had the privilege on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday and when there was a Bible conference to sit under it because I just love the sound of this wonderful message of being acquitted. And then all you talk about is we've got to go. I don't want to join a church that has too much demands or too much service. No, James is a pastor. James probably every now and then looks out there and says, man, they ain't been in six weeks. Anything that comes along, all they give God's their leftovers. And he's probably wondering as a pastor, what in the world's wrong with that man's relationship with God? And maybe every now and then he even said, honey, let's pray for them. I'm not even sure they know God. What would make someone make a statement that you question whether somebody knows God or not? Their behavior, their actions. If every time you were around me, I was swearing this to God, using slang and cursing. If every time you were around me, I was full of pride and basically told you I didn't give a rip about what concerns you, never cared for the poor, never threw a dime in the offering plate, didn't care about the expansion of God's kingdom. Who cares about going to church? What do you mean love your wife like Christ loved the church? If none of that ever meant anything to me, you'd have a right after a while to say, I've observed this man. I question if he even knows God. Well, the first meaning of the word is acquittal. The second meaning pertains to vindication or proof. I'm, I'm going to give you a one-liner. Faith is the path to righteousness. Works is the proof of righteousness. Name a mother here that if you had a son, he said he was a Christian, he came home drunk every night. When he sobered up the next morning, you talked to him, he cursed you for everything you're worth. Ain't a mother here that would believe that kid was acquitted. Not, not one. Has no desire for spiritual things. There's no spiritual birthmark whatsoever. I'll guarantee you what that mom would do if she knew Jesus. She'd be on her knees crying out to God. Capture that old boy's heart, Lord. Capture his heart. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, Paul said, Indeed, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that God may be justified in your words, God's words, and may overcome when you are judged. In this sense, James is saying, Abraham's supreme demonstration of that justification occurred when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar. It was when he offered up Isaac that the whole world, all of his friends, everybody that knew him, could perceive the reality of his faith. 
His faith was so genuine. Boy, I'm not there yet. He'd give up anything. He had such, boy, belief was a big word for him. See, in verse 21 and verse 23, even though it can seem to contradict one another, justification by faith pertains to a person standing before God. Whereas justification by works pertains to a person standing before other men. Verse 22 is interesting. It says, you see that faith was working together with his works. And by works, faith was made perfect. Now, why didn't it say by faith, works was made perfect? Because you don't need to add anything to faith. So your works are, so it's not faith plus works. I mean, you need to hear what I just said. That's a great truth from that text. He could, you reverse it and it changes the whole meaning of the entire text. You add nothing to faith. I came to Christ through faith alone. In Christ alone. And so it says they were working together and by, uh, by your works, your faith was made perfect or made mature. It's not that salvation required faith plus works, but that works are the subsequent outgrowth and completion of genuine faith. Jesus on several occasions pointed out the purpose of a plant or a tree and how it was to grow and to bear fruit. Uh, just as a fruit tree has not fulfilled its goal until it bears fruit, so also faith has not reached its end until it demonstrates itself in righteous life. Let me let Jesus speak for a moment. Matthew seven nineteen. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down, thrown in the fire. Why? Because it's not serving the purpose in the end to which God created it. If you plant a tree and you've studied that tree, you might be able to say, uh, next spring we'll have bananas. You've been studying, you know that it's gotten to a certain growth. You expect it to produce, but if it doesn't, probably cut it down, get you one that does produce. Listen to the Apostle Paul in the context of what we consider one of the strongest phrases in the Bible on salvation, where in Ephesians 2 and verse 8, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. No one will be able to boast before God. Nobody will get there and say, well, we're glad Jesus is here, but I'll tell you, I lived a pretty good doggone life, good life. Matter of fact, if somebody gave me, hand me my Bible, I want to sign my own Bible. I just did a really a good thing in the way. No, no, everybody that gets there, if they are given a reward, and if it is a crown, we won't be able to quickly enough get to the feet of Jesus to lay it there in gratitude because we'll all know that the only way any of us could have gotten there is because of what he did for us, and it's not what we did for him. And but he's just saying that once that does happen in your life, though, it just there's just going to be things that validate it in your life. Heavenly Father, oh, God, help us to love you. Help us to examine our faith to make sure that we're, we're really in, Lord. Speak into our lives. Help us not to go out and just do good works thinking we'll please you. But help us just to yield and, and let it be natural fruit. Remind us that we've never seen a banana tree strain to produce banana. It's not working to produce it. It's just innate within its genetic structure and it just produces it. It's a God thing. And so are good works. The love and joy and peace. I can't manufacture the fruit of the Spirit. But you just sort of grow it through our lives as we yield to you. Help us to take serious. Abraham believed and boy it sure was evident by his actions. Help us to believe. And help there to be some proof that we're on the right path.